How's it going, YouTube? Right, picture this. You've got an average car stereo in your car. Just the usual built-in one, and you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You've either not got the skills to install a whole new stereo system, or you don't want to. You don't want to rip out the original. You want to leave it as stock as possible, but you still want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. What do you do about it? You get yourself something like this, a nice little plug and play device that you don't need any skills to fit. You literally just plug it into the little 12 volt socket that you've got in your car, plug it all in and it runs. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Oh, you're helping again, are you? I think you might have to move so I can do this. Okay, this is a Sikane dash camera DVR. They sell it as a dash cam, but it does a lot more because of the CarPlay and the Android Auto. Right, main thing in the box is we've got this screen. It's a 10.26 inch, uh, 1600 by 600 resolution uh, screen. On the back, as you can see, we've got a forward facing camera. Uh, this is spec'd as a 4K Ultra HD camera. Uh, this unit is actually sold as a dash cam, but it does a lot more than that. As you can see over the back here, we've got the ports. Uh, one is a USB type C for the main power and everything else. We've got an AV in, uh, micro SD card, and here we've got a GPS in. This is an optional extra for a GPS uh, antenna. You shouldn't need that to be honest, because once it's paired to your phone, it's using the GPS from your phone. The micro SD is an optional extra. I've dug one out, so I'm gonna stick it in there and you can format it in the settings. Power button on the top and some decent uh, double-sided tape that you can stick it down to your dashboard. Uh, you will notice actually this is quite flexible as well so it doesn't have to be a perfectly flat dashboard. As you can see pressing the power I've just powered it up. Um, I didn't realise but it's obviously got a battery in it as well. I just had a look around the website I can't see any specs for the battery life so I don't know how long it will last on a battery. The front camera Depending on the angle you want the screen, you can move it about as well. So if you're angling back or forwards, you can angle the camera to suit. Also in the box, we've got a reverse camera. Uh, we can wire this in. Uh, you can lay the cables across to the back of the car, whichever way you want. Uh, but there is a reverse camera. Right, if I pull this cable out a little bit, what you can see is on the camera end of the cable, we've got this red wire. This goes to a reverse light if you want it to automatically come as a reversing camera. So what that'll do is that'll put power down it from your reverse light, and then that'll automatically switch the screen over to the reverse camera display. So this can either be used as a reverse, uh, rear camera DVR, or it can be used as a, as a reverse camera, or both. We've got an auxiliary cable. This can be used either as auxiliary in, or it can be used as auxiliary out. I'll show you that when we're in the car. And here we have the main power cable. Uh, there is an optional extra cable, which instead of having this 12 volt socket, it's got a fused input so you can hardwire it in. Uh, this, is, this is just so you can plug it in and out as much as you want it to be. If I open this up, we've got the USB-C that goes to the back of the display, uh, the power out, and we've got a USB that can be used as a USB input, and we've got this little one here, which can, which is used for the rear view camera. This USB can also be used to hardwire your phones because obviously the Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay is wireless, but it runs your battery down on your phone. So you can hardwire it in there with a USB socket and it'll keep your phone charged as well. Also in the box, you get the manual. This gives you all the instructions you need and the setup and everything else, but we will have a look at it whilst it's in the car. And the best thing about this screen is it's literally, it's currently selling for $100, which is a bit of a steal actually, once you see all the features on it and the things it does. I'll put links below to where you can buy this one. I'll put, link, I'll put links below to this exact unit so you can buy it. It's $100 at the minute, like I just said. It's an absolute steal uh, with, with the quality of it. And I'll put links in the description where you can buy this for yourself. Right, let's go and get it fitted to the car. Oh, you're helping as well, are you? Let's go and get it fitted to the car and let's go through all the features. 
Right, here we are. I've set it up in the car. I've not stuck it down yet because you can't see the display behind. Uh, it's actually, I think that's a good place for here. Once you've got the radio set up, we'll talk about that in a minute. All I've done is I've just let the wires dangle down for now. Um, I've got the 12 volt power plugged in there. I've ran a cable just through here to the camera at the back. If you see there at the top of my window, I've just put the rear view camera in and I've ran the cables just round the back, just loosely, because I'm trying to make it an uncomplicated install. Literally just a plug and play. In this car, if we was leaving it in permanently, I probably would leave it there actually, apart from the camera is a little bit obscured. Right, if we have a look at this recorder, uh, this is the dash cam side of it. You'll see we've got two cams set up there. Uh, this is probably a bit low, this should be a bit higher up so it can see properly, but it, it sits in nicely here. Um, we've got various options across the bottom. This one here changes between the front, the rear, both of them. Uh, we've got a microphone on and off button there. This just turns off the microphone for recording. It automatically records when you turn the power on. A uh, snapshot there, this will just record a, a snapshot of whatever you're looking at and a, a lock to lock the video. Right, if we go back to the home, uh, down here on the replay we can press that and then we can go into any of the previous recordings to have a look. You can also do this from an app. If I go into settings, uh, we've got one here called Wi-Fi info. This gives you your QR code, you can scan that and download an app. So if we do that, as you can see, this gives us an app to scan, uh, takes us to the app, uh, Apple Store, and you get RoadCam. If I click Get, we can download that. Now once it's installed, if we start it up, Add Recorder, please connect the Wi-Fi cameras. Right, if we have a look down on Wi-Fi, uh, this is on the Bluetooth actually, this one here, down at the bottom, uh, this one that ends in DCC, this is connecting the Bluetooth, for this screen. So if I connect this one here, uh, this will connect the Bluetooth of the phone. This is also for the Apple CarPlay as well. And it automatically connects to the CarPlay screen as well. But for now, if we go back to this RoadCam app, start that up, uh, you can see there, this is the screen that we've got connected because we're connected by Bluetooth. We're straight into the live preview screen and if we click on video this should have all the recorded videos so we can select any of these movies and download them onto our phone right and as we're connected by bluetooth uh, now if we go into this mobile internet this will start up the carplay screen there we are there's our normal carplay uh, we've got the i use tom tom navigation and this is just your usual carplay that everybody's used to as carplay uh, currently as it's set up, if I go into our music, I've got some royalty free music here, hopefully it is. If I play it now, that's coming out of this internal speaker. So what we can do, if we go back into these original car settings, bring up the original display, we can change where we want the audio to come out of. This FM button here, if we press on that, currently audio out is set to speaker, We've got a few different options. Uh, we've got FM and auxiliary. Uh, the Bluetooth, it won't connect your car radio to this screen. So we can send things from the phone to the screen, but we can't send music from the screen to anywhere else. So you can't connect this to your car Bluetooth. Uh, but what you can do, if we go onto FM, you see how there I've got uh, 103.5. If I move this out of the way a second, if you tune your radio into a frequency that's not busy, that's not got anything else on, I've picked 103.9 there. Uh, I've just manually tuned it on the radio display. And as you can hear, we're just running static. If we go into this FM setting, and what we do is 103.9, is if we match this one, then you should hear the static will stop. There we are, the static stopped because now this is broadcasting at 103.9. My radio is receiving at 103.9. So now all the music and the sounds are coming out of the car stereo system because it's picked up through FM. So if we go back into uh, CarPlay, if I go back to the music now and press play, 
Now the music's coming out of the car stereo system. Sounds much better. It's not perfect, but it does sound good, especially for the money. Uh, the next option for audio out, if we go back to car, we've got this audio out lead. Uh, on this car, I've got an audio input jack. So if I plug this into the audio input jack, on, this, on the screen, I've got the audio there. I can plug this end into my audio input on the car. So if I go to my auxiliary on the car, we set up auxiliary on this screen. Now all the sounds coming out of the car through the auxiliary cable, which is obviously much better quality. Right, back to the main screen again. BT, obviously Bluetooth. Uh, we can go in here, we can change the settings to change the name of the Bluetooth device. Switch it on and off, things like that. Uh, brightness, and then we've got settings. In the settings, we've got mobile link. This is for the type of uh, device we're connecting to it. I've got it set at Cap Apple CarPlay. We can set it to Android Auto, uh, Apple AirPlay, uh, Android Wireless Mirror. Uh, you can set that up to whichever is your preference to what device you're using. CarPlay position. This is for a mix between your DV cameras and your CarPlay. So if we click on left, click confirm, and then if we go back to CarPlay, now what you'll see is you've got the CarPlay over here and the DV camera there. It seems to default to the front-facing camera, so hopefully that's the one you want. Right, back in settings, right is obviously the same thing. The car plays this side with the camera that side. We go back to full screen. Resolution, this is a resolution of your front-facing front camera. It's currently set to 4K. You can reduce the resolution of that so you can save some space on your SD card if you so wish. Uh, loop recording, this is the length of each individual video clip before it starts a fresh one. Uh, currently set to one minute. You've got three minutes and five minutes. Uh, G sensor, this will automatically lock your videos uh, so you don't lose them when it detects a collision. Uh, this is for the sensitivity of that setting. Screensaver, uh, setting guidelines, this is for your reversing camera. So what you can do is you can adjust these guidelines. We're not using the reversing camera as a reversing camera because of that red cable, uh, but you can adjust the guidelines to where you want it to be for the road, so it warns you when you're too close to something. Uh, mirror setting for your reverse camera. Rear camera flip, upside down, uh, depending on which way up you install it. Language, time setting, date format. Uh, you can also, you can format your SD card from here, reset your factory settings, and your version history. What I've also got is I've got an Android phone here. So what we'll do is we'll connect this up and see what Android Auto looks like. If we go into settings, uh, we can set the mobile link up to be Android Auto. Right, I can never remember how to use Android because I'm an Apple user. Uh, if we go into Android Auto, connect to car, uh, connect using wireless, connect using Bluetooth, uh, pair a car, pair a new device because this has not been connected by Bluetooth yet. There it is, it's just popped up at the bottom. So let's connect it up. Now we've got an active connection. So we should be able to go into mobile internet and we should start up Android Auto. Uh, so if I press OK, continue, this should sync everything. Pretty similar to CarPlay. There we are, Android Auto set up on it as well now. As I said, I'll put some links below about this stereo system, where you can buy it. Super cheap, straightforward to fit. Uh, you don't need any skills at all to be able to fit or use this. Anybody can have CarPlay or Android Auto on any car. Right, there you have it. Super cheap CarPlay, anybody can fit. Just plug it in, stick it on your dashboard and you're away. Everybody can have CarPlay then, can't they? Or Android Auto. So like the video if you liked it. Uh, if you want to see more things like this and also the cars that I'm doing and trips that we have in the camper, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys in another video. Cheers.